Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, today we're going to paint a beautiful sunflower with a green finch. Um, but first of all, before I start uh, on that process, I'm going to talk a little bit about materials. Um, today I'm going to do the painting on a piece of Arches watercolour paper. Um, which I hope is going to give me a really good texture to work with. Um, so I've got that here stuck down with a piece of uh, some washi tape there on my board. Um, and here I have uh, some of my work in progress, um, some um, playing around that I was doing yesterday as I was trying to think what to do. I did a sketch in um, watercolour pencil here. And uh, this is what I'm going to use to draw with today. This is a Charisma Graphite Aquarelle watercolour pencil. Um, the reason I'm going to use that to do this drawing is that I want to leave some of the lines. Um, as you can see in this one here, we can still see the pencil lines and I've made that part of the, um, the feature of the actual painting. So I'm going to probably leave some lines in the one that I'm going to do this morning. <clears throat> and um, I wanted to also show you this, which is a pencil sharpener, something the like of which I've never seen before. Tamsin gave me this for my birthday, um, designed in England, made in China, but you can't get away from that nowadays. It's got a blade fixed into it on the underside there and it goes into this little container like that. And then to sharpen your pencil, you just do this. And you can get quite a nice point and you don't waste anywhere near as much um, of the pencil as you do when you put it into one of those the other thing I normally use is a mechanical one, mechanical um, handled thing. So now I have a nice sharp point, as you can see, without having lost too much. So that's a really useful little piece of kit because I do use pencils quite a lot. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And the other one I'm going to use, <coughs> and there's nothing wrong with my chest, by the way, apart from the asthma that I've had all my life. <coughs> um, uh, Karat um, Stettler Karat Aquarelle. This is another pencil which I really like and this one melts beautifully into the paper, into water and gives you lovely, lovely strong darks. So we'll be using some of that as well. So I'm just giving that a quick sharpen too. And I'm, I'm still learning how to use this little piece of equipment but it's certainly working. Saves a lot of, a lot of lead because you get a quick point like that without filing it all away on your machine. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, so now I'm going to look at the other bits and pieces I'm going to use. Probably going to use this Zen Art um, Black Tulip um, number 10 round as a uh, part of for laying in the initial washes. So that is great. All of these things will be um, in the description below the video. There are affiliate links to them on Amazon or else you can um, go to the website dianeanton.com and you'll find the blog there and where I talk about this painting um, and I have got links there to the different things that you can use. This is a draw well um, round synthetic brush. Um, no affiliate links to this but you can contact draw well direct if you want to order these from Japan and they're very good price and they are extremely extremely good brushes which don't do that. Um, then I will be using my water brush, which is a Kuretake water brush. Um, I recommend this brand. I find them wonderful. I've got a big one as well as a small one, but I tend to use the, the green one most. Um, this has really loosened up my painting a lot and made it possible to paint a lot more quickly. Um, which may or may not suit you, but um, definitely give it a try if you're ever out and about painting away from home because they really are handy to have. 
Um, then the colours that we're going to be using today, I have chosen. I've got Hansa Yellow here, which is a core colour, um, one of the new core set that I was given for my birthday. And that's a nice bright yellow, nice clean yellow. So we'll use that. Quinacridone Gold, this is um, my um, Schmincke Quinacridone Gold, although I am now the proud possessor of Daniel Smith Quinacridone Gold, but I'm going to stick with the Schmincke for today. Then we've got um, <clears throat> De La Rowney, um, olive green. I've got Winsor & Newton Windsor Violet. Um, this is uh, Schmincke Cobalt Blue. This is just a bit of black or Payne's grey, same kind of thing. And this is sepia, I think, or Van Dyke Brown. Um, that's from Old Holland. So those are the colours that we're going to use basically. And now I'm going to draw the uh, sunflower. Okay, so there's the sketch done. And uh, first of all, I'm going to um, quickly put in the undercoat for the bird. And um, the green finch is a kind of olive green color, mostly. So we'll just drop in olive green over the whole of the shape of the bird with the exclusion of his beak. And also with the exclusion of these two yellow patches here, which I'm going to do <coughs> in a combination of um, Hansa yellow and um, quinacridone gold. It's quite bright. So we'll let that dry and uh, then we'll come in again with another layer. Just checking that you can see what I'm doing. I've got my piece of towel there, which I use quite a lot to um, clean off my water brush and to dry off any excess water on my ordinary brush if I should be using one. I've drawn in the uh, the green finch there and a little bee here, so we'll just pop in the yellow of the bee as well. Um, black, yellow, black, yellow. I always have to remind myself where the stripes go roughly. So we'll just do that. We'll leave that to dry though before I put in any Payne's Gray um, for that. Now the um, the petals of the um, sunflower the next thing to do and I'm going to use a fairly big brush this is my number 10 um, black tulip as I said I'm going to use a fairly big brush because I want some reasonable sized washes for this for these petals and I'm going to make them very loose I've drawn I don't know I hope you can see I've drawn a fairly um, accurate rendition of a sunflower there but we are going to paint it fairly loose so I'm going to put in the undercoat, which is this yellow, and you'll see that the watercolour pencil is going to melt a little bit and give some texture to the petals. Um, but that's okay, that's, that's what we wanted. If you don't want that, that's fine, just use an ordinary pencil. A nice uh, Stettler Mars or whatever. And don't worry about maintaining any kind of particular shape with your flowers, with your petals rather, because you're going to adjust that as we go along. So that's basically the underlayer. And then I'm going to just, as a starting point, pick up some quinacridone gold and uh, drop some of that in as well and let that all mix and mingle. Make it a little bit more golden towards the centers, the center of the flower there. And then um, for the flower center, you want a kind of textured thing of brown and then the center is kind of green. So we'll put a little bit of olive green 
with some Hansa yellow to give us a light greenish colour. Quite similar to the bird really. And then sort of blend that in with a bit of yellow. And this is just the first coat as I said. Then down here I've put a sort of um, seed head type of thing. Not seed head, what am I talking about? Um, unopened flower, green, unripe. So that's that. And then we've got obviously the leaves here. So we'll just very loosely, yellow and green, just indicate that. And then I'm going to uh, just wet the area around the flower, coming up quite close, and then I'm going to drop in just some sketchy sketches of um, Windsor Violet with a touch of green to kill it down a little bit. I'm just going to bring that in and let that mix and mingle. And we want the yellow to run. So we're allowing it to touch. And then just as a little bit of sky to indicate the domain of the bird. It's a hair. Thank you, Arthur. Put a little bit of cobalt blue up here in the sky. Okay, now I need to let that just uh, dry off and we can come in again with the next, next layer. So it's dry now and I'm going to just um, come in with some Payne's Grey and finish off this uh, B here, or at least do the next step. So we'll just pop in his dark areas there. And um, then I'm just going to drag the colour lightly up into his wings. Maybe drop a tiny bit of blue in there as well. And then when that's dry, I'll put some more black in here, some more yellow, make a second coat in other words, and I'll put, <clears throat> put his legs in, probably using, actually I can do that now. If I use this watercolour pencil, you can put some nice dark legs in and I can also just put a little bit of strength there into the wet. It, uh, it works really well, this pencil, for strengthening darks. Just a little bit. And then in a minute I'll make the yellow brighter. We could use the same pencil for the dark area around the eye of the bird if we wanted to, but I'm not going to do that just yet. But he does have some nice um, patterns on his back there that would probably work quite well if I did it in pencil. I like the idea of mixed media, the combination of pencil and watercolour. I think it's 
It's very controllable. And whereas watercolour can be a bit unpredictable, this, this is actually sometimes quite a rewarding way of painting. Okay, so now I'm going to, I've got my number 10 again, I'm going to put a little bit more, uh, some more darks in here. And uh, we'll concentrate the darks a bit on the lower side of the uh, sunflower and allow it to be slightly lighter on the top. So we'll just pop that in like that. And then probably come in with a bit more green mixed with, that's olive green mixed with Hansi yellow for the center. And then I do think really it wouldn't be unreasonable to put some orange canacridone gold in there. And then we're going to bring more petals in. So just flicking out from the center of the flower like that. And then we'll, we'll make it a little bit more lemony at the top. Even a little bit greenish. And we'll take a bit more olive green, a little bit more quinacridone to make a softer green. And we'll just drop in some indications. And then the violet, we need to strengthen a bit in places. So we'll do some of that. A little bit more down here. Maybe we might just darken up the stem there. And the olive green as well in the back of the bird. Time to just put some of that in. And he's kind of yellow, yellow gold underneath, so we'll pop a bit of that. I expect the bee is now dry, so we can probably finish the colouring there. So we just hands the yellow first and then a touch of quinacridone gold. And um, still need to strengthen this. Going to pick up some quite strong quinacridone gold now for some petals, shadow petals. And then what I might do now is uh, grab my watercolour pencil and just redefine some of these. could do this with ink if you wanted to. Here we had, we had drawn these petals turning over as the bird's standing on them. So we can re-instigate that. Re-instigate, that's not the right word, is it? And 
and then with a the smaller brush we can just put some hints and preferably with a shaky hand it's beneficial. And again, just hold the pencil really loosely and quite near to the end. Don't don't grab it like this and, and all that rubbish. You need to just be very loose. You'll appreciate it more. It's more relaxing. Don't make any of your lines draw, join up, just and make some of them darker than others. Choose one part of the flower that you're going to emphasize. So like this bit here is where I've got the darkest bits and the reddish, re um, orangish bits, but over here it's less. So this is where you play with your pencil and do your texture and stuff. And every time you do a little bit of a line, you, you stop and look and see whether it's going too far or not far enough. Now the bird um, has a kind of dark mask a bit around his eye, like that, so I'll just put that in. I'm not really going for massive realism here, but that isn't far off of a green finch. And then we will make his yellow yellower. Just a bit. And I'm going to let that dry now and see where we're at. So I'm just going to put uh, the light back in the eye that we've lost from the bird. So that's uh, just one tiny drop of um, white ink from Windsor and Newton. And just lighten up some of these lines here that went a bit dark. And that's the only use I have for that ink at the moment. And then the final thing, I think having let it dry, and observed that the paper has actually shrunk slightly, but that doesn't matter. It's actually pulled out from underneath the tape that I had holding it down. And now I'm just looking for my rigger because I'm going to um, put a little bit of spatter on this, if I can find my rigger, that is, which I had in my hand a minute ago. Okay, so we'll just pick up some quinacridone gold mixed with Hansa yellow, make a nice loose, not particularly strong, but wet kind of thing, perhaps with a touch of brown, and then just a few drops. Don't want too much. Ideally, the drops would be reasonably big. So there we are, that's not too bad. Maybe we'll just put a few green ones in as well over the leaves. And I think I'm going to call that done. So that's the final painting. Hope you enjoyed watching me do that. Um, easy enough if you just relax and take your time and just play around with the colors. Um, if you want the sketch, the sketch will be up on the website dianantoncom If you just pop on over there, you can download it for free, no charge for that. And there are sketches for most of the paintings that we've done over the last year or so.
So you're very welcome to all of those. And don't forget to join the channel, subscribe, and to actually take out channel membership if you want a little bit more. So I will say goodbye for now to everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye.